Blaring Aegis, tap down, a Rob of the Rich, doesn't really matter because we're gonna give it protection from red and swing it. All right, there we go. That, okay, that was sweet. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and we are playing all that Lurises, all that, all that Lurisai, yeah, anyway, we're, we're doing all that Lurises, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> anyway, so we only have 12 creatures in this, a like, completely one drop deck except for our seven two drops and our one Luris in the side, or yeah, it's in the sideboard. Uh, we do also have a sideboard here. I'm only, I'm going to be playing this best of one, uh, but there's amazingly like Yoked Ox is really good against mono red. There's a bunch of just like really good uh, answers for all the different uh, decks here but it's it's very powerful overall uh and so this is basically what the deck is trying to do we have our 12 creatures all seed of life's bounty healer's hawk ginger brute we want to get onto those creatures all that glitters along with a bunch of other really good enchantments that we can bring back from the graveyard with luris if ever we get to that point glaring aegis taps on a creature that the opponent controls this is amazing for me able to get in for a little bit more damage being able to put one point of toughness if we have all the glitters or couple all the glitters onto him it can be a lot more damage than that uh, a lot more power than that onto a lifelink or something that can't be blocked a flyer really good then we have god's willing help us get in uh, for a little bit more damage as well as well as protection for only 12 creatures uh camacho's blessing which gives hexproof indestructible it's amazing all of our creatures are, should be enchantments or enchantment creatures uh with our all seed life's bounty and so we should be able to get them plus two plus two and indestructible we need to be holding up mana uh pretty often in this deck to be able to cast this kind of stuff um so there are a lot of decisions to make within this deck and so i'm not sure i'm the best pilot necessarily for this one because i'm still kind of new to it but we're going to be taking it into ranked and see how we do with it um sentinel's eyes gives it vigilance and this is actually one that i think is really cool is solid footing which with our sentinel's eyes uh, we can assign uh toughness damage rather than our our power damage and so with our glaring ages with our sentinel's marks and like sentinel's eyes solid footing which occasionally we can get every one of those onto a creature we may just have a little bit more toughness onto a creature and so it's just a little bit something extra but mostly this just has flash so we can you know hold up our, our protection and everything and then flash in the solid footing for a little bit more damage on the next turn and that's mainly the game plan this this is it it's pretty straightforward so let's just go ahead and jump jump into the gameplay see how this one does for us and yeah wish me luck all right we're up against pedro perez de salvo bring it on we're gonna keep this we got the healer's hawk we have a creature and protection all oh, please no shocks i wonder if we almost want to hold off for a turn just to have a bit of protection maybe that is the better way to go with this i i associate especially with no other creatures at all i mean i guess we do have luris to bring it back so play out healer's hawk Glaring Aegis is sweet because then it dodges pretty much all removal from this point on. But if they have the Bone Crusher, if they have Shock here, ooh, we're in trouble. Okay, grab the range. That we can deal with. It's annoying. Especially because they can use a lot of the things that we have pretty easily. No blocks. Let's go with, uh, I guess, just Sentinel's Mark here. It's up to three toughness. Glaring Aegis gets it a little bit more protected and then we can still use like God's Willing, flash out the solid footing as well. The question here is, do we swing in and go aggressive? Probably actually, you know, let's, let's go for it. We're gaining as much as they're dealing for the moment. As long as we find uh, all the glitters, we're definitely winning the race. But now that it has five toughness, the issue here is just the Robber the Rich, but now we have a lot fewer cards. They can use solid footing, that's fine. And they are gonna flash it out, that's cool. <laughs> that probably means they have nothing else, they just may not have lands. Alright, light up the stage. It's a land, Squirt Spitter. Decent stuff there, sir. Um. I don't want to play Luris unless we have protection, so I think we'll just Sentinel's Mark here. Yeah, just Sentinel's Mark. No reason to do it instant speed. Really? Well, that's right. Uh, it has Vigilance for this turn. I forgot that uh, Sentinel's Mark does give... 
Oh, it, it gives them vigilance all the time. I, for some reason, I always just read the addendum side of it. But being able to give this vigilance all the time, and uh, because it has vigilance, with our glaring ages, uh, no, not glaring ages, solid footing, now it does damage equal to its uh, toughness rather than its power. So it is now a 7-7. <laughs> uh, with, yeah, with uh, lifelink and flag and vigilance and everything. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think that's the main reason to play this, is just it's really good against mono red. <laughs> All right, pass the my turn. So they do have reach creatures. So we could give this protection from... Actually, how close are we to lethal? We can get in for nine if we give this protection from red. Actually, no, we get, to, we get the toughness. That's right. All right, so I think we do go in here. So Blaring Aegis, 10 damage. Tap down, a rob of the rich, doesn't really matter because we're going to give it protection from red. Sure. And swing in. All right, there we go. That, okay, that was sweet. I've, I've not really played this deck yet, and that was really, really exciting. <laughs> okay, let's go again. Alrighty, up against X on X. And dude, we are just too good. You have Luris and you win. That is how this works. <laughs> it's just too powerful. All right, this is a little bit of an interesting hand. We don't actually have a lot of great things. Ton Excuse me, ton of creatures. I mean, we do keep it up against Obosh. Obosh. More creatures. I mean, creatures are good. Life and creatures are great, but they're really good if we have all of our pump spells. That's like... The reason why we have more of those in the deck than creatures. <laughs> uh, we may even just trade off here. I mean, we are winning the race. They can pump and mentor. They take an entire turn to do so. And that's fine. There we go. All the glitters. All right. So what we do here is we will we get to flash in solid footing um, on our end step. We're going to swing in healer's hawk. Let this have protection. Actually, let's see. Yeah, so go ahead and swing in, pass the turn. Tin Street Dodger. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Alright, pumps the banneret. They get to swing in Mentor. Yeah, so they're swinging from five. That is a lot. That is that is scary. But yeah, we're swing in for like seven lifelink next turn. That's going to be a bit better. <laughs> land. Perfect. Okay, there we go. We got the land. We get the all the glitters onto Healer's Hawk. Um, I could get it just make turn into a 6-6 six, six here. It's basically out of reach uh, until they get Obosh and can like double cast things. So I think that we just play out more enchantments here. Swing in for more lifelink. Got seven. Up to 20, down to 12. We are definitely going to win this race, my friend. Especially if you're just going to keep paying. Oh, I think they forgot to mentor. Uh, we could kill that, but yeah, no blocks. Down to 17. They could have skewers, double skewer here. Rough. All right, so we do need to be holding up protection. We've we've learned our lesson. That is the better thing to be doing. All right, Sentinel's eyes onto. Let's see here. Do we want just Healer's Hawk? We do get Luris out potentially. I I, I want to be able to cast stuff right away with it though, or hold up protection. So let's go, Healer's Hawk. And let's put it on to Healer's Hawk. And pass the turn. Yeah, so I do think that playing out the All Seed was a little bit greedy. I forgot that this deck plays the Skewer the Critics. A bad thing to forget.
All right, we will... We'll probably just kill Banneret with one of these all seeds. If they swing it with Grim Initiate, we can actually do some pretty cool stuff. If we're gonna, if we're willing to trade off killing something anyway. Yeah, so. It is definitely best for us if they do swing in. They could have Shock here as well. All right, they have two three threes. We're going down to 11. We could just swing it in the air here. I mean, these guys can come back with Lurus at some point. And until we get the all the glitters, that doesn't help a ton anyway. So we'll just trade off. Hold up the protection so that we don't have any shenanigans. Yeah, I feel like they were they were trying to hold up a shock there or something. So pass to my turn. Um, Luris. Hold up protection this time. Down to ten. Pass the turn. If they have, like, double removal spell, we're in a lot of trouble. And that's just unlucky if they do. Oh, bosh. Oh, bosh. We could also just, like, block 10th Street Dodger and give Luris protection. Gain a bunch of life back. And then we get all the glitters and I'll see the life's bounty back. Or I guess we'd, we can still play another one. Yeah, I, I think that's the best play. So block with Luris. Actually, wait. Oh, I should have blocked with both. My bad. Oh, sorry. No, that's that is not the right statement. Okay, give you protection from red. Because we have protection in hand, they played all their mana. Ooh, and an all the glitters in hand. Ooh. All right. So all the glitters from the graveyard onto healer's hog. Light. Uh, I'll see's bounty from hand. How big do we make it? I think we need protection one more turn. Okay, swing in with Healer's Hawk. Down to five. We didn't have a way to get lethal there, I don't think. Um, yeah, we would have done like eight damage or something like that. But dude, this deck is this deck is solid. I like it. All right, up against Owl Sheik, and um, we don't actually have pump spells necessarily, but we're going to keep this hand, hopefully drawn to some good things here. We will lead off with Healer Sock, because it's just the best card. Ginger Brute gets a swing in, turn two. Gonna hold the protection. Life's all good. I dig it. No shocks. All right, no shocks. Life's great. Life's amazing. All right, Ginger Brute. Um, swing in. See if they go for the block. We throw in the solid footing then. We'll probably hold the protection. Pass the turn. We can flash this in at, at end step as well. Okay, fervent champion. Oh, so fervent. Oh, double ferventies. Swing in for six, you say? Oh no. That is that is pretty rough. If we get in all the glitters out the top, life is amazing though. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. All right, put this onto Healer's Hawk. Life gain is great. Luris can come down and kind of block something, but we need protection. All right, so I'll see the life bounty. Uh, swing, swing. We can give this plus two, plus two, and indestructible. Uh, and kill something. That seems pretty powerful. And still hold up protection. We are at a point where killing things is nice.
It's better just to get that in for damage and try to go a little bit more aggressive. Because we could block and maybe like bring it back with Luris. Or have this be a way to kill Annex. Ember Cleave is still really annoying. I, I I think we do block in Blessing. We get to gain three life here, which is awesome. All right, all the glitters. Give it to me now. Solid footing. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad. We could just play out Luris as a blocker with no protection. That doesn't seem great. Solid footing. We can flash in on something else. All right, we'll do what we came to do. I mean, I, I could flash it in, I guess, but. Swing with Healer's Hawk. I mean, I guess we go aggro. Swinging with Ginger Brute, we'll use his ability. I mean, Annex is going crazy here, but we're basically showing that we have another Kometra's Blessing. We'll see if they take bait or whatever. All right, I mean, they, they swing in. That's fine. Let's see if they have the Ember Cleave. No Ember Cleave. All right. Down to 13. But I mean, they're not winning the race here. Light at the stage. K. Okay. I mean, Annex does get very, very big. But being able to gain life every time they as well as do damage, okay, that's a lot of saviors. There's a lot of shaders. Sentinel's eyes is very good here. All right, put that onto Healer's Hawk. Um. Swing in for five. That doesn't speed up the clock necessarily. Unless we find something else, then we could have lethal on the next turn. How much damage are they doing? One, two, three, a ton and a half. If they have Castle Ember, if they have Torbrand, we're like dead, dead. Um, we do have a chance of gaining some life at least. We could also gain life with Ginger Brew as well. So like that's that's something else that we might want to look into. I I think we do go ahead and go for trying to win on the next turn. Hope that we find some sort of pump spell. And have lethal on the next turn. Up to 17. I mean if they have Torbrand, we're dead. Castle Embreath is also not great. But we get to gain quite a bit of life here. So let's go. So block Scorch Bitter, block Annex. This is only creature we control. Five, ten, twelve. We gain a lot. Create another Seder, which can't block anyway. I I guess we go like that. If they have Ember Cleave, we're in a lot of trouble. All right, they just use that. Uh, so we're not dead at this point. Okay. Up to nine, or down to nine. All right, can we get lethal here? No, no, we can't. Actually, yes, we can. Oh, uh, no, it's, I was thinking that was a permanent. It is not. Play Luris. Swing in, swing in. I mean, I guess now we hold it back as a blocker.
Okay, down to two. Yeah, maybe we do go for, I don't know. All right, pass the turn. We have God's Willing. We didn't even play anything for Lurus, so they're probably suspecting. Okay, so we block Annex this time. We're just going to use God's Willing, I think. Um, Lurus block one of these guys. They will Castle Embereth. Five, six, so that's 12 damage coming through. We get to gain seven. If we do find another pump spell of some sort, Ginger Brute can finish it off for us. So I don't want to lose it just in case there is a way that they get around this. I can't see how they would with two cards. I also, I also don't see how they necessarily get lethal without Ember Cleave here. Okay. Two mana. Okay, God's Willing onto Healer's Hawk. Keep it alive. Protection from red. We will keep another God's Willing. That's fine. All right, there we go. It, it resolved. That should be game. Dude, all right, I, I'm liking this deck. It is it's pretty sweet. Oh, down to eight. Oh man, we lost one life. Ugh. Man, what a brutal swing. That's just rude. <laughs> oh, they got reach. Okay, that is a thing. But we also have another God's Willing, so. Here, it doesn't matter. There we go, sweet. The Robber of the Rich actually could have been pretty devastating there. Uh, that is something to remember. They have Robert the Rich. It has reach. All right, up against Joel Sill, and no pump spells. I mean, look, three healer's hawks is still pretty good. I actually wonder if we want to play like one Heliod in this deck. Uh, I guess we can't play that with Lurus, can we? So no, we don't. We don't want to do that. That would be weird and stupid and dumb. Maybe like you could maybe play a Johnny though. Maybe like maybe squeezing like two copies of a Johnny somewhere in here, just for maybe the more mid 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 range style. The evasive creatures definitely are better though. All right, healer sock, ginger brew. We're just gonna throw out creatures as many as we can this turn. Worry about protecting on later turns. The worst that they'll probably be able to do is, I guess they could be playing stomps. Or Brazen Borrowers. Birth of Melitus. Thibblefoot. Uh oh. All that glitters. No protection here. Alright, swing, swing. Keep Ginger Breed alive so that this all the glitter stays bigger. Down to 14. And Charming Prince Cave. Now here's a question for you guys: Is it better to scry two or draw a card? So they have a they have a choice here, either scry two or draw a card. I think that having card in your hand is sometimes better, but also being able to like make sure that the next draw you have is good. I, I, I'm in between because cards in hand are better than cards potentially in your hand, but I don't know. All right, all sight of Laos bounty. Ah, uh, we'll hold up one healer's hawk. Yeah, I don't want to go too crazy here. Um, we will pay for ginger brute. Swing for six, down to eight. Pass the turn. God's willing, it doesn't protect against board wipe, but I'm assuming that they're playing like Winota here. Fairy. All right, they absolutely are bouncing Healer's Hawk, so give this protection from blue now. I, I mean, I could use Alcide of Life's Bounty as well. Keep Sentinel's Eyes, that's good. Let's 
slow this down. If we give her protection from white, just heads up, you lose the enchantments that are attached to it. They no longer are able to equip. So protection from white is not something you want to do at any point. Heads up there. <laughs> Okay, they bounce all the glitters to hand. I mean, we have to replay it, but that's not a, I mean, that's not a big deal at all. It, it may keep them alive for a turn. That's probably what they're thinking. All right, so put it onto another all the glitters. Or sorry, Killer's Hawk. Um, we want to hold up protection, so. Do we care about Teferi? Instant speed stuff is annoying, and we do have a lot of things we want to cast at instant speed. And we're not speeding up our clock necessarily. Unless we're swinging it with everything. Swing like that. Down to four, past the turn. Let me know if you're up for round two. We have protection. So board wipes are basically their only answer here. Yeah, there we go. Opponent scoops it up. And that's five for five. We had one, like, insta-scoop, but, I mean, you take what you can get, okay? <laughs> no creatures. Got a mulligan. Creatures, we keep. We dig it. We like it. We love it. And surprisingly, I was I was a little bit worried about wanting to have more creatures in hand, but we really only want, like, two. So we'll probably drop one of these Ginger Brutes. We're up against another Lurus deck. I do worry that this is a deck that uh, a lot of people are going to start playing, and I'm not sure how you play the mirror match. Because you can't give protection from white very well, so it's just like, go for the biggest things as possible. Yeah, I guess so. Hopefully we can get this to have uh, Vigilance at some point. Because it can get very big with Solid Footing and Glaring Aegis. Keep this. Oh, not a land. <laughs> Ginger Brute. Healer Sock, pass the turn. They could, they may be playing like dead weight, so maybe holding up protection was better. Green, interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of what removal they might be playing here. Green, all right. Solid footing on the Healer Sock. Let's just swing in aggro. Down to 17, only two drops and spells. Paradise Druid. They could just be playing like all ramp spells. Like this could be like an elf ball type deck. That could be kind of funny actually. Um, I don't feel like it's gonna be a board wipe. I, I may go ahead and just play out the Luris here. Offer the trade with Ginger Brute. Put just a little bit more power onto the battlefield. So if they don't, if they do tap down Paradise Druid or if they're just going for other stuff, we can swing in pretty aggressively. Season of Growth, okay, that's fine. Kai's Ghost Form. Yeah, that's doubly fine. Doubly so. <laughs> all that glitters, all right, here we go. This is, this is, this is good stuff. All right, all that glitters onto Healer's Hawk. Uh, uh -huh. Five. Um, Glaring Aegis. I'm actually going to put this onto Lurus for a bit more protection. Swing in for... Not quite lethal. Down to three. And pass the turn. Oh, I like this deck. <laughs> I like this a lot. Alright, so Abzan enchant Enchantments. With Season of Growth. There's lots of card draw you can get with that. That is a fun deck. Dude, Luris is just really powerful. And not necessarily Luris itself, like the ability is busted. But remember, you could be playing all of these decks without the without the Luris. I, or, I mean, without it as a companion. You could be playing all these decks with, you know, three or four copies of Luris in the main deck. And it would still function just about the same. Just you'd have to trim down a few things here or there. Um, and you, would, you wouldn't have the restriction. I, I'm actually kind of surprised how well this, this stuff does. All right, we get to swing in for a lot. They do have one more mana. 
They have enough toughness. I mean, th there's no way they can double block Luris without dying. Angelic Gift gives it fly. All right, now they're definitely dead. They get to draw two cards though. But now they don't have blockers. Oh, do they? Because maybe they might. All right, well, attack in. No life link. Yeah. Sweet. All right, I'll take it. We ranked up with this deck. Six wins in a row. Uh, and that, that feels good. That feels really good. All right, so this deck is busted. It is proven it is for real. This deck is just straight up busted. Let's check out the details here. So I did have a couple of losses. One of them, I was in traditional ladder and I was realizing I wanted to build this deck, so I just quit out of the, the game. Uh, these two, I ran up against a deck that was running two graft, like they had two graft diggers cages in the opening hand and we had a, a deck or ended up playing out where we really needed Luris. Another one was just like a bad play, but then we had six wins in a row and those are the ones that we ended up showing here. And oh my goodness, this deck just feels really powerful. We even won in 13 seconds. Someone just quit, but you know, whatever. <laughs> and so, uh, I think this deck is solid. I think it's really, really powerful. I think that you should definitely check it out. If you're trying to rank up in standard right now, this is probably the best way to go. Uh, I mean, of course, it depends on if everyone's playing this again. I'm not sure how well it does against, I mean, if it's a mirror match, you just try to win the mirror match, you know, but it's really good against mono red. It's good against the control decks that are going a little bit slower. You, I've also noticed that you tend to be right, uh, matched up against people which have kind of similar decks. And this does really well against a lot of the other similar decks out there. So, I mean, that's, that's really good as well. So anyway, uh, definitely, I, I don't think this is even that hard to get. There's the one Luris. What other rares are there? Yeah, one rare, and then we have like our two Castle Arden Bell. So I mean, also a very cheap deck. This is like the deck to be going with. So guys, pick it up, do it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, and bye-bye.